What is up YouTube? My name is Mark and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a gear review. Uh, now we haven't really been doing a whole lot of them this season. We've got a few coming because we've got a lot of new gear that we're going to be using for the upcoming season. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, and let us know what you think of the video. Like it, dislike it. If you have any ideas for other gear that you would like us to review, let us know down in the comments. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a new saddle. Um, actually, it's not really that new. Wood hunting saddles has been around for a while, but it's new to us. Um, we met the owners of wood hunting saddles at the Florida Outdoor Expo like two weeks ago. Uh, they had it set up there. I hopped into it and I thought it was awesome. I only spent a couple of minutes in it, uh, but it feels really solid. So I asked them if they could send me a saddle so that I could do this gear review. Um, so let's get into unpacking it. We'll start looking at some of the features and I'll let you guys know what we think. And before I forget, for a limited time only, um, if you use the code SNS10, you'll get 10% off of everything on their website. So uh, go check out their website. It's gonna be down in the description. I honestly don't remember it right now, but I wanna say it's woodhuntingsaddles.com. Um, you can also find their gear on Eastern Woodman, Woodsman Outdoors. EWO, as you'll see it uh, called online, um, which is a great place to buy anything saddle related. So go check out that website. They've got a few different types of saddles, but wood hunting saddles is one of them. So um, let's get right into it. A big deer and he didn't go 30 yards oh my god <laughs> that's the first buck i've ever shot Woo! what a rush money that deer is dead tagged out baby <laughs> you shot one yeah hell yeah dude. i saw him go what? down Before I get into this too far, let me just make a, a couple quick announcements. We have a bunch of events coming up. There's two archery events coming up that I think you guys would be interested in and we'd really love to see you guys come and join us at those events. Uh, one of them is going to be a youth archery event. The whole point is to get kids out there trying archery. We're gonna be teaching them sort of beginner uh, archery things. We're gonna have a whole bunch of bows for them to use so they can try it out. Um, and then we're also gonna run a tournament. The kids are gonna be able to go out um, and shoot that course uh, and the adults will be able to uh, pay for a tournament. There's gonna be cash prizes. All kinds of awesome items have been donated that are gonna be uh, raffled off and you can also win them in that tournament. Uh, so that event's going to be happening on June 11th. It's going to be at the Gold Coast Archers uh, Club. If you haven't heard of them, go check out their website. There's a link down in the description. It's a great archery club. I've shot there quite a few times. Um, if you're looking for a place to go and shoot your bow, it's in Delray Beach. So if you're down in South Florida, um, it's not that far away from uh, a lot of places. I'm up here in West Palm. It's only 25 minutes away. But if you're down in Fort Lauderdale, it's about the same. So um, go check it out. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys at that event. And then we have another event that I'm even more excited about, which is gonna be even better for uh, you saddle hunters. This is gonna be a uh, first of its kind event and I'm organizing it together with our bow shop, uh, Skull Hill Archery. Brandon's a great guy. Again, if you need anything done to your bow, go check out his store, it's in Okeechobee. He it just does an incredible job. Um, but what we are going to be doing is setting up a 3D tournament for saddle hunting. So at each target, there's going to be uh, a platform and a tether set up. You hop onto the platform, you can adjust the tether up and down the tree, clip into it, and you're going to take your shot at the target from your saddle. This is gonna allow you to try a bunch of different positions. We're gonna make it a little tricky. Some of them you'll have to do, you know, offside shots. Uh, for those of you who are left-handed or right-handed, you're gonna have to sort of switch around, try and figure out the best way to shoot. Um, I think it's gonna be really fun. And 
For those of you that are new to saddle hunting, we're actually gonna have a workshop uh, for the first part of the day where we're gonna show uh, a bunch of different saddles. You can get into them, try them out. Uh, we're gonna be showing a bunch of different methods you can use to climb up the tree, different platforms, different climbing sticks, ropes, all that stuff. We're gonna have a ton of gear that we're gonna be raffling off, giving away, um, and you know, it's just gonna be an awesome day. So I hope you guys can make it out there. It's gonna be at the Highlands County um, Archery Range. Um, and there's gonna be more information about that or any of the events that we do. If you go check out our Facebook page, we'll put an event page up there. So just go on Facebook, look up Swamp and Stomp, join the group, uh, we'll put everything there. And I think I've talked enough about this let's get back to this gear review but man i really hope that you guys can come out there and support i think it's gonna be an awesome event so hopefully we'll see you guys there Alrighty, first off pretty good looking box um so i had them send me a few different items so here's the saddle put that over there um and they also sent me one of their uh their dump pouches as well as one of their tethers, oh, and the backrest. So um, I'm gonna put these together real quick and show you how that works. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna put it on. I'm sitting on my saddle or on my platform right now and I'm gonna hop in the tree and uh, let you guys know how it feels. All right, so first off, um, we're gonna attach the dump pouches here. The dump pouches are mesh. Um, they're very simple, super lightweight. Um, and there's a little uh, waterproof um, nylon or polyester, I think it's nylon material here. Um, I'm not really sure, but it feels like it's waterproof. So you can cinch the top shut um, and that should keep water off of your stuff for the most part. Um, but again, mesh, super lightweight. Um, the attachment method, they have these little buckles um, and this is awesome. We've seen this before. You just simply slip these through your molly loop flip it the other way and that is stuck. Real easy. Um, I probably should have put that in the right hole. Um, but you get to see how easy it is to move it. So there's two of them, that's the front one. And then I'll put the back one right here. There we go, that is stuck. Um, and these dump pouches, they're pretty big, so you can really fit a lot of stuff in there. Um, I usually like to run my uh, tether. Um, I have a tether on each side, so I usually run two dump pouches, but I'll run my tether, I'll run the, um, the base for my camera arm in there, um, and I, I put all kinds of stuff in my dump pouches. In fact, in another video, I'll do a saddle dump. And I'll show you all the stuff that I keep in my pouches because I think some people might might appreciate that. Anyway, so that's that. Um, up here we've got the uh, the bridge is uh, simple am steel. A lot of companies use this. Um, so one of the things I do like is you can see here you've got the prusik knots on the bridge loops, and that's going to allow you to slide uh, the attachment point of the bridge and that's gonna allow you to adjust um, where the pressure is being distributed on your butt. Um, you're gonna, you know, you most of the weight is gonna be taken by these top and bottom straps. Um, and so you can basically shift how much pressure is gonna be on the bottom strap versus the top strap and that's gonna uh, help you stay more comfortable. You can make adjustments in the tree um, as the day goes on. When you start getting some pressure points building up, you can kind of move them around. So I really like that because I used to have a system very much like this um, on the Arrow Hunter uh, Merlin. Um, which was a great saddle, I really enjoyed it. And this saddle is very much like it, but there's some features about it that I think are gonna make this a much better saddle. Um, and one of them being that the, um, the straps that are weight bearing are much wider, which means that that weight is distributed across a larger surface area, which means it's not gonna be digging into your skin as much. And, it, and it, over the long term, this should be more comfortable. Um, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, these are your, um, uh, 
lineman loops right here. They've got nice fluorescent uh, orange on the inside. It looks like, yeah, there's some reflective material on the inside there. So if you're using a flashlight, you'll be able to see that reflect, but it's not on the outside. So um, it won't show up to the animals, but you'll be able to see it from above and below um, when you're trying to clip in. So that's gonna make it really easy to get your carabiners hooked into that. Um, another really cool thing this is this is totally new i've never seen this on another saddle the knot that is used the friction hitch that is used on the bridge this is called a blake's hitch uh, whereas most companies will use a prusik knot just like what you see here the problem with the prusik knot is even though it, it's quite functional when it bites it bites hard and it's hard to break it under load uh, whereas this one I'll show you once I'm in it. You can actually move this while your weight is on it, but it has enough friction that it'll hold your weight no problem. So that's a really cool thing. Um, it's a this is a very popular style saddle. It's a pleated design, so uh, you can sit in it uh, as is, where it's taken up about this much space. But then you can spread that weight out by opening up that pleat. Um, and you spread the weight across a larger surface area. Again, this allows you to change the pressure points when you're sitting in the saddle for a long time, which again is gonna make you more comfortable in the long run. inches from tip to tip um, and then from top to bottom we're looking at 14 and when pleated we're looking at or unpleated I guess we're looking at just over 17 and a half and I don't remember uh, what the values were for the uh, other saddles I've done this, but I will look those up and I will put them right here. All right, let's talk about buckles. Uh, so this saddle, this is their deluxe version. You can get it with two different uh, buckle situations. These are the buckles, Cobra Pro Style buckles, what it says right there. Um, these are obviously pretty heavy duty. You can also get it with G hooks, um, which basically it's just, there's like a loop on one end of the strap and then on the other end, there's like this hook. You just hook it in um, and you're good to go. It's a little simpler, but they are not rated for uh, as much weight as these. This thing right here, it says it right there, 15 kilo newtons. So that's like 15,000 kilograms. So that's a crap load of weight. So, uh, so these are incredibly strong. Um, it is a little bit more expensive to get the buckles. I want to say it's like 30 or 40 bucks more. Uh, we have the same style buckles here on the legs, just a smaller version. Um, so these, I mean, they feel incredibly solid. Um, so I, I have no doubt that these are going to do the trick just fine. Um, so that pretty much covers all the basics. Oh, let's talk about material real quick. Uh, so this... Um, material here this is a thousand denier uh, nylon um, so but keep in mind this isn't really weight bearing it's mostly the straps that are uh, that are weight bearing uh, but this stuff can hold a an incredible amount of weight and then in the center the pleat is actually um, heavy duty mesh so when you pleat that open it's going to allow air to flow through uh, and keep you nice and cool which is going to be great for florida uh, but because the rest of it is made of this thousand denier uh, nylon this thing isn't going to be stretching and warping um, it's going to actually create a solid um, background a material for you to rest on and it's going to take your weight really well so all right let's talk about the accessories real quick so the um the tether here um this it feels really stiff so this is definitely a static line um blue water ropes rated for 5,000 pounds um it has a sewn eye um 
and there's this little uh, um, bungee material loop and this is going to be used to um, to cinch your uh, your girth hitch onto the tree so it doesn't come loose. So that's actually really useful because not all of them have that. There's a simple simple stopper knot down at the end here that's going to stop you from dying. Um, we've got a Prusik loop um, that your carabiner is attached to and uh, this carabiner is lightweight, aluminum, um, screw style, uh, I forget what they, the screw gate I think they call them. Um, screw lock says it right there uh, it is rated to 31 kilonewtons so a crap load of weight that's gonna hold you with no problems at all um, this is a little thicker than the rope that I had with my tethered saddle which I believe was an 8 millimeter but it's definitely thinner than the 11 millimeter does it say how thick it is it does it's 10 millimeter okay so I was right about that um, it doesn't actually feel anywhere near as thick as the 11 that I had. So, um, but anyway, overall feels pretty lightweight. Um, I'm not gonna do weights on it. I'm really not that worried about the ounces, um, but uh, it feels lightweight. Um, the other accessory we got, we got this backrest. Uh, this thing feels really nice too. Um, one of the things I like about it, it's got mesh. So it's gonna allow uh, it to breathe a little bit, uh, but there is some padding in there. And again, it's made with this uh, thousand denier uh, nylon that the rest of the saddle is made of as well. Um, so I got it's pretty wide too. So I think it's gonna be pretty comfortable. Um, let's hop into the tree, put this thing on, and we'll see what I think of it up there. You know, one thing that I forgot to mention too is that Wood Hunting Saddles is actually a Florida company. So if you're from Florida, you like to support the local economy, uh, you might really like this. Uh, not only is it from Florida though, and like I said, these things feel awesome. So let's put it on. If I can find the buckle. Um, also worth mentioning, they make this saddle in a number of different sizes. This is a size three. This is for big boys. This is for guys my size. Um, I'm like a 40 waist. Um, I'll put right down here somewhere. I'll put the uh, the size ranges uh, for uh, the different sizes that they make. So you have an idea of like what waist size um, they'll cover. But the nice thing is they will cover uh, some some pretty big guys, uh, which is great because not all the saddle companies will are well fit for the big boys so there we go there we go simple tighten that up all right blake's hitch so usually when i get up into the tree i always have it short um because i start with the tether nice and short and then um i'll Make it a little bit longer, uh, which, which is why it is so important to me that I have that Blake's hitch to be able to change the um, uh, the length of the tether without having to like stand up and fidget with it, uh, which obviously is not the easiest thing to do when it's dark. All right, let me step up here real quick. Let me flip you guys up. So I like to run my tether about nose height. Alrighty, so there it is. We're hanging. Um, I've still got it pleated. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is still uh, pleated, um, which means my weight is sort of being distributed over a smaller surface area. Um, so the first thing I usually do once I get up in the tree is I got to make my my bridge longer. So while I'm leaning into it, I don't know how to do this. Okay, well maybe it doesn't work. It's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to break it under load, but you know what? Maybe they weren't expecting a guy my size. All 
There it goes. So I can do it under load, but I'm a big load. <laughs> so uh, maybe other guys won't struggle with it as much, but for me, uh, it doesn't go as smoothly as it might for others. But I was really hoping that would be uh, as nice as when Danny did it uh, at the expo. But for me, me being a little heavier, the Blake's hitch still doesn't make it easy, but it is a lot easier than that Prusik knot. The Prusik knot, um, I have to stand up like this and and like break it loose and then pull it down to adjust it. But as you saw, I was still able to do it uh, under load. It just took a lot of pressure to uh, do it. So that, you know, once I get used to that, how much pressure I got to put on it, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to get adjusted when I get up into the tree. So that's nice. Um, I'll show you what I meant by the Prusik knots um, being able to adjust uh, where the saddle sits on your uh, your hips, or not on your hips, but uh, where the pressure points are. So I know from experience, from running my, my old arrow hunter, that I like uh, a little more pressure towards the top and a little less on the bottom, just because I'm a leaner. Um, it makes it a lot more comfortable when you're just leaning. I like to hang out like this when I'm hunting a lot, but uh, I'll just show you. I can break that Prusik knot and pull that up. So this will be all the way up. And now like pretty much all the pressure is, is at the top here. There's really no pressure at the bottom. Like you can see, I can, I don't know if you guys can see that. I can just wiggle the whole bottom strap. There's no pressure there. So all my weight's right at the, start, at the top right now. So that's not really the way I like it, but I just wanted to show that I can do it. Uh, I can go the other way, bring it down to the bottom here. And now, pretty much all the weight is at the bottom. And as you can see, I can move the top strap really easily. Uh, this is nice for when, you're, when you like to sit, because when you sit down, um, the saddle's basically flat at this point. Let's see if I can flip you guys down a little bit. So for sitting, it's really nice to move that forward like that or down. Um, this makes it real comfortable to sit. Um, and that one thing I do like about this is that it's fully adjustable. You can make the adjustments to any position you like. Whereas if you look at an, like a like a tethered phantom which is a really popular saddle they have those comfort channels you basically get like four settings um and there's no in-betweens but what i found when i was in my my tethered or sorry my uh arrow hunter you can make like a quarter inch adjustment and man does it make a difference so when you're out there all day i have found that you know you can kind of make these little adjustments throughout the day whenever you're your butt starts getting a little tired it starts getting a little bit of pinch you can make these micro adjustments and uh they really make it so you can stay in that saddle for a much longer period of time um so i really like that aspect of it so in its current mode with the pleat closed up uh this is you know similar in size to like a, a tethered phantom xl again really popular saddle we used them for about a year we really enjoyed them um, but uh, you're kind of limited to uh, to the size that the saddle is this one I can if I want to I can make it bigger and go into comfort mode um, so I'm gonna put on the <coughs> the back band and um, tell you guys what I think of it while it's in the pleated mode and then we'll go into full comfort mode and unpleat it. That's upside down. Okay. Um, first thoughts on the back band. I wish the strap was a little bit longer. Uh, I'm a pretty big guy, so as you can see, the buckles are basically touching the side of my boobs um, wish that was a little bit longer uh, but comfort wise it's actually it's real nice 
Um, it's like I said, it's padded. So I could see that uh, keeping me comfortable for a long period of time. I just wish that strap was a little bit longer. Um, now let's open up the pleat. So there, I just pulled it open. And uh, as you can see, it's out now. And that moves the saddle further down my legs, further up my back. And I mean, really that makes it incredibly comfortable. Um, I could definitely see hanging out on the tree for several hours. And, starting to get a little bit uncomfortable after a few hours and then opening up that pleat changing the pressure points and you're good to go for another few hours and then after that starts to get uncomfortable you close up that pleat again and uh, you're good to go again you can do all day sits that way and I've done that in the past um, so I really like that um, one thing I also really like is that with this saddle if I close that pleat it actually stays closed uh, even when I put my whole weight on it and I remember with the uh, With the arrow hunter see look like that pleats closed and my full weight is on it with the Arrow hunter. I found that as soon as you put your weight into it. It just opened up. So it really was only Closed uh, while you were like walking But as soon as your weight went into it, it just spread right out and after sitting in it for a few hours it was open permanently um, so it really kind of defeated the purpose of that pleated system they might as well have just made a bigger saddle because uh, after a while that's just what it turned into but because this is made of this thousand denier heavy duty material i got a feeling that this thing will uh will actually stay pleated like this and it'll hold its form a lot better so all in all i'm really impressed with this saddle um you know it's lightweight uh, it covers all the bases. I love the adjustability uh, of this, um, I don't even know what to call it, the, the, the bridge loop system. I love the Blake's hitch, being able to uh, you know, adjust the length of your, uh, your bridge while under load is super cool. Um, again, the rope, real nice quality. Everything's really nice quality. I'm real happy with it. Personally, if I was gonna uh, run this saddle year round, I might consider getting the G-hook um buckles just because they're a little less bulky um and and i know for a fact that uh for the most part uh the thing that's going to be holding your weight is going to be the saddle system and these are just backups um, but man is it difficult to fall out of your saddle um you know the saddle is a safety system in itself these are just extra safety and those g hooks are able to hold your weight just fine they may bend if you fall but they're not going to snap off um and so i think those will those will be more than enough and i'm just a kind of a minimalist guy i don't like bulky things so even though these buckles are really nice uh, i would probably get it without those um anyway that's my review but thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate the support. Um, and let us know if you have any questions about this saddle. We'll be happy to answer them down in the comments. So catch you guys next week.